63 years old, and he is coming September 16. He was supposed to be 63. On so September 16, yeah. I am anticipated that, that he's going to make it to 63, right? So it happened. So the last time that I'm with him is uh, most of the time I only come maybe two or three times a week. But ever since I came to know that he will be moved from what's this? Palliative care. Yeah, palliative care. And I don't know what the palliative care is. And then finally, I have so many, you know, relatives, son, and, and you know, granddaughters that they know about palliative. So explain it to me that if you will be put on palliative, right, they will now stop the regular medication that he's been receiving. Mm -hmm. It will only be comfort care. Comfort. It means that if you have a pain, no need for you to wait for uh, an hour before they, you know, give you the pain reliever. So upon learning that, I became so happy. Because to tell you frankly, my son has been asking me that, please pray for me to die now. And I said, don't you think about that. Hi, hi. And so he did fight. But after three months, still going, suffering. And I really found out that there's no more chance for him to be healed mm. by way of doctors, everybody. So I said, it's only me, Rafael. I think, you know, God knows what's best for him. So when he was put on this palliative care, I told Boy about it. And he said, oh God, thank you. Therefore, that I will not be getting any more pain. And I said, that's what I said. No, if you have a pain, they're going to give you more pain, whatever, you know, pain reliever is. And finally, he's so happy, happy. Because I, I'm saying, but the thing is, I know already, he won't last. If he will be put through palliative care, right? So I'm still happy. Because I don't want him to suffer anymore, to tell you what. I love him so much. Sorry. So, when I told Boyet about it, he said, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. We both thank God. So, I'm going to say now the last five days that I'm with him. Upon learning about this pilot, I promise him, Boyet, I promise you, every day, I will be visiting. I will let me speak to daily. Right. I did. Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday, it, you know, when I arrived, he's already complaining. I said, boy, I thought, you know, there's no more pain. And he said, no, the, the pain reliever they're giving me is hurting me most. Mm -hmm. He complained about this. Um, Narco, morphine, no, whatever. The other one? I, it's okay, my daddy. Whatever medication that is complaining. No, the one that you know make you a bit well if they always inject that to you. Morphine. Morphine. That's yeah. it. Morphine. <clears throat> said, no, I don't want to take it because it's bitter. Mm -hmm. I thought morphine is only being injected, mm -hmm. right? Because I saw a film about <coughs> Rocky Graciano. The way it was made to feel, he became a victim to this morphine because at that time. You know, during battle, he got injured, and they injected morphine on him. Until he went to the hospital, you know. When the war is ended, he got addicted with morphine. So every time I heard morphine, it was injection. With Boyat, it's not injection. It was, you know, through mouth. He was brought Boyat back said, to I don't like it that it's, he was back it's, to it's bitter. So instead of get, getting, you know, relief, he's crying. So he wanted to stop. <laughs> then I told him, oh yeah, you said you want to be a dad, but it's not, you know, it's not helping me, it's more painful, you know, it could feel it, you know, the bitterness of it. 
strong Annabelle again requested. Yeah, Norco. He went back to Norco. It's okay. And back to normal, right? Yeah. And then, again, last Friday, this is supposed to be my fifth visit without pain, right? When I arrived, he said, Dad, please, I'm so itchy. He said, boy, they told me it is contagious, highly contagious, but Dad, please, so what did I do? I put on my gloves. I said, who cares what is this thing? You said, I've been doing this to him. He lifted me, he said, what in the bottom? Scrub it. He said, you know, it's, you know, and I'm already old. But yeah, I he's did, dead weight. He did, yeah. you know, the arm, the leg, I did. After that, I saw, I'm so tired already. I said, boy, yeah, maybe I should go at nine o'clock. Oh, God. He said, why? I'm tired already. No, that is. Just take that pen, you know, that's for one hour. I said, one hour, I can do that. So I waited. And then, 10, 10, I already stood up. And to him, put my palm on his forehead. I prayed. We prayed. And he said, bless me. And then after praying, I said, boy, I got it. But remember, I must not be able to come tomorrow, which is Saturday, right? So my mom would share. Yeah. You want me to come? So I said, again, I said, okay, boy, I might go. And he smiled. I left. Saturday came. It's around 6, it's still very hot in here. And I'm already old. I'm 86, going on 87. Right? So I went out. And I cannot bear the heat. The heat. I went back again to my house, <coughs> and then came back at 6:30. It's still so hot. I said maybe boys will not mind. One or day off. Yeah. Oh. So I did not. Sunday morning, I'm supposed to attend this mass, 10 o'clock church. Mass. Yeah. And in here, 10 o'clock. Still hot. I woke up 4 4 a.m. I usually woke up like that because. You know, I'm old already, I have to pee, right? But after that, go back to bed. I don't have hard time, you know, falling asleep. But that Sunday morning, I did went back to bed. I brew the coffee, we have a brewer in our room. Then after brewing, eat the coffee, I listen to some music. Around nine, I already put my pants, because in, in the church, from our place, it's only, only take, 15 minutes, so again, nine o'clock already, right? I'm about to put everything already, and then the telephone ring. I look, and I answer, I said, Dad, it's me, Marvin. So I said, never call me that at that time, especially Marvin, right? Marvin, what happened? Boy, it is dead. Tell you frankly, I don't know what to do. I cried uncontrollably because remember, we're praying. Me and him are praying to God every day. Dad, please take Boyet away. You know, take it into your kingdom because he's suffering too long already. And at that day when God finally granted our wish that he's going to be, you know, no more suffering, my reaction is no. You know why? Because I forget. I mean, I did not come that day, that Saturday. day. Yeah, you didn't I visit. I so guilty immediately. I said, why did I not come? Because that Sunday morning is dead. That's why it's so hard. And then after maybe half hour, when I came to my senses, I realized, oh my God, I'm sorry. This is what we've been praying you. Yeah, right? And true. now, look what that's I'm talking true. about. So I said, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. Thank you for granting our wishes finally. And now, my son is no longer suffering. And that's the only thing I could tell you. If I tell you about our yeah. being close together, wow, he was my much. firstborn. We will need the he Netflix. He was my D. friend and buddy. <laughs> Series. Anywhere series, we go, yeah. I'm with him. Mm -hmm. right? Okay, drama series, yeah. Oh my God. I know. It's, you know, it's hard for me. Though I'm happy now, he's no longer in pain. But sometimes, you know, being human, 
I could, you know, still feel the pain of losing him. Of course. And that's it's it. Hard. And it's thank you very much for coming. Daddy, we love you, okay? Bye.